Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining, Cecilia here and today we're going to paint a triquetra, also called a trinity knot. I got a few requests to do more Celtic knots, so I thought it would be nice to create a mini painting series with which I show you different Celtic knot designs. If you only want to draw the trinity knot, this video is also perfect for you, just skip the painting part. My intention is to show you a really simple technique that allows you to create a really precise and symmetrical trinity knot by using a compass and a set square. So we dive a little bit into geometry, but don't worry, it isn't that hard. Also, I prepared some wood panels that are 10 by 10 centimeters because I think this is a great surface for this project and I already primed them with golden gesso that can be used for both acrylics and oils. That being said, let's dive right into it. The acrylic colors that we need are white, lemon yellow, cadmium red, permanent green and black. For the oil layer, we use zinc white, cadmium yellow, pig hue, cadmium red, phthalo green, yellow shade, raw sienna and black. The brushes that we need are filbert brushes for the background and a small round brush or a small flat brush is also good and a tiny brush for the trinity knot. As usually, I paint an underpainting in acrylics because it dries that fast, which makes the whole painting process a lot easier. And after that, we will continue with oils. If you paint only in acrylics, you might want to use a slightly different technique that matches accordingly. We are going to set the background color first, then we draw the triquetra with a compass and a set square and fill it out with white. What we are going to do is creating a gradient from the middle towards the sides. So the middle is brighter and the sides are darker. This creates a nice glow. In order to get an olive green color, we mix permanent green with a little bit of cadmium red. This is the dark green and for the middle we pick a little bit of our dark green color and add white as well as lemon yellow to it. Then we apply those two colors to the panel, the brighter color in the middle and the darker one at the edge. As you can see, the white is still shining through a lot, so I will quickly go over this layer again and make the edges even darker by mixing a little bit black to the green and of course blend it nicely with only the green color and then the light green color the closer I get to the middle. That looks quite good. This layer doesn't have to be completely opaque because we will paint afterwards with oils. But if you don't want to paint with oils, I'd suggest that you already paint your final background because now we will continue with drawing the triquetra. And you know, it's a lot easier to paint a nice background gradient when you don't have to paint around an object. For the purpose of this video, I will draw the triquetra on paper to show you how to create it because I figured it is more visible for you due to the dark background of the wood panel. First of all, we have to find the middle point by drawing the intersection of the two diagonals. Then we divide the square into six equiangular parts. We draw a vertical middle line. The square is 10 by 10 centimeters, so the middle is here, five centimeters. We mark that and then we connect these two dots. After that, we put the set square to the middle point and we measure 60 degrees and draw a line. And to the other side again, 60 degrees. So each angle is 60 degrees. Now we need the compass and we mark the size of the triquetra. The radius is 4.2 centimeters. We mark three points in total. Here the first one at the top. Then we leave the next line out and mark this one. And leave this one out as well and mark that one. The next step is about drawing a circle and it's two thirds of the size, like 2.8 centimeters. So just to clarify the step in case you have a different size, this piece here is 4.2 centimeters, like 3 thirds, and the radius of the circle is 2.8 centimeters, which is 2 thirds of this bigger piece. 
Basically, you can use any size and keep this proportion of thirds in mind. Now we have to determine the thickness of the triquetra. I go for 4 millimeters. I think that's a good size. So we draw a second smaller circle with the radius 2.4 millimeters because we subtract 4 millimeters from the radius of the bigger circle. Now we need each of these three points here where the smaller circle intersects the lines. We position the compass here and use this distance as radius and then draw a line downwards to the second point. Maybe you have to adjust a little bit if it isn't that precise in order to meet that point. On to the next point, it's the same approach, like that and the last one as well. We keep this radius and measure it, it's 3.7 millimeters, and we subtract 4 millimeters, then we have 3.3 millimeters. And now we do the same step as before in order to draw the inner lines. Ah, that's it. Looks good, right? Now I will continue with the panel. You can see I already prepared it. So let's fill it out. We still use acrylics and a small round brush. I use only white in order to keep it simple because I only want to brighten it. Of course, you can add already the colors that you want, but to me it seems easier to mix the color tone afterwards when we paint with oils because we have to mix the color tones anyways. And also, we quickly define the shadow areas where the line is going underneath the other one. For that we mix a little bit black with lemon yellow and start at the top. Basically, we just follow the line. First it's going under, then over, and then under, and over again. It alternates. You don't have to blend it, of course you can if you want to, with white, but we will go over it anyways with oils. I gently raise the lines in the middle because otherwise I have to put on a thick paint layer to make it disappear. But I would only do that when you have a solid background and paints that stick well. Let's move on to oil paints. First we premix our colors. We start with the background color, for that we mix phthalo green with a little bit cadmium red, again to get an olive green color. This is our dark green color. The second one is the brighter one for the middle. For that we mix white with cadmium yellow, pale hue and a tiny bit of our green color just to get a greenish touch. We paint the gradient as we did before. Actually, in order to have a greater dark light contrast, let's paint the very edges of the corners black and then blend it with the dark green color and we paint towards the outer lines of the trinity knot and leave a little bit space for blending with the lighter color. Afterwards, we paint the middle with the light color. Basically, we paint the whole inner circle and you can see that I paint over the lines. I do that because the color of the triquetra is quite similar, that's why it doesn't matter. But I wouldn't do that with the green color because then they're mixed and I don't have to write color tone anymore. Now we want to blend those two color tones. You can do that right on the canvas or you can premix a mid-tone color on the palette by taking a bit of the dark and light color. I like to premix it, I think that's easier. So we fill the space around the triquetra and mix this mid-tone color with the dark color. And you can see I paint carefully outside the lines, not beyond. And we do the same inside the circle. We paint the edges with this mid-tone green color and blend it nicely, but make sure that the very center of the circle, like this triangle, remains bright.
For the Triketra, we mix a golden light color. For that, we use cadmium yellow, pale hue, as well as raw sienna, and we adjust different hues with black and white. We mix three different shades in total. Let's start with the mid-tone. For that, we use the same amount of raw sienna, as well as cadmium yellow, pale hue. For the light color, we grab a bit of our mid-tone color and add white to it, as well as more cadmium yellow, pale hue. For our shadow color, we mix raw sienna with a bit black and cadmium yellow pale hue. For painting the Trinity knob, we use a small round brush or a very small flat brush and a tiny brush. We start with the shadow color and paint the areas where the lines cross each other. Now I'm going to tell you two different ways to paint the rest. The first one, like I show you here, is more time consuming and probably harder. Like, I pick a tiny brush as well as the mid-tone color and paint the outer edges of the lines because we want to round them off in order to have a more realistic appearance, like if they were real golden rings. And then I fill the middle with the light color and blend it nicely with the rest. The second variation is probably the easier one. You can also paint the whole lines with this mid-tone color and brighten only the middle with the light color. The reason why I do the first variation is because of the early consistency of cadmium yellow pale hue. I found it's harder to paint an opaque bright layer over a darker one with this particular paint. But maybe I'll change my mind in the future and find an easier, more effective way for this color tone. Last but not least, we use pure white and paint the glossy spots. We paint the middle of each section, like this part in between two shadow areas. We paint the middle white and blend it towards the sides with the light color. Also, we blend the shadow areas with the mid-tone color and then with the light color. So that's it for today. I will probably do another layer because the background isn't that opaque and I like rich colors. And I will also refine a bit the details of the Trinity knot, but it will be the same procedure. I hope everything was clear. Let me know in the comments below if you still have questions and also feel free to share your artworks with me. You'll find all my social media links below and you can just tag me. Thank you so much for being here and watching this video. I wish you a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video.